Good morning, Parkway. Welcome to church this morning. Let's stand to our feet. Let's worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come on, let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation this morning. Let's sing it out. Let's sing, why do you turn? The water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Unlike you, and into the darkness you shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Yes, there's no one like you, God. And unlike you, our God is greater, and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Oh, yes, he is for awesome in power this morning. Let's sing into the darkness. Oh, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you, and none like you, and our God is greater, and our God is stronger, God you are And our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. And our God is greater, awesome in power, our God, and our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand against? What can stand against? Sing our God. that God is bigger and God is stronger? Is He bigger and stronger than any of your trials and pains? I certainly hope so. I'm thankful that you guys have came here today. I'm uh, not good apparently at using my microphone. Can you hear me? All right, we'll continue on. You know, uh, when I get up here to do announcements, what does that mean normally? Yeah, well, Bubba has not gone to get me two times today, so I, I just apologize for that. I know. I'm sorry, Miss Jane. We'll, we'll get through, but no, Pastor Bubba is with his family, 
They are in Iowa right now, so that's where Tori's family's at, so we're thankful they were able to slide away and see family. Um, but I want to give you guys a couple announcements. I'd love for you guys to stay connected with us. Um, and so if you guys are tech savvy, I want you to know that online, on phoponline.com, we have our calendar. So I, you guys can go ahead and subscribe to that. And what it'll do is it'll give you all the events going on for 2021. Go ahead and subscribe to that. Again, it'll give you notifications for everything we've got going on. I want to give you a couple updates. We talked about previously how we would like to do baptisms at the beginning of 2021. And there are several people that have been interested in that. And if you are interested in getting baptized, if you've never been baptized or if you're baptized at a young age and would like to renew that, uh, please come see me. What we're going to do is the next two Sundays after church, it's something I've never done before. We're going to try it. And if everybody hates it, we're not going to do it ever again. But we're going to try our best to, to give it a whirl. The next two Sundays after church, what we're going to do is I'm just going to explain for about 30 minutes what baptism truly is. There's a lot of misnomers and misconceptions about that. And God tells us to be baptized, but it doesn't save us. And so we want to walk into that and really help us to understand that. Uh, there's several families, there's several people that are interested in that. Again, please come see me so I know that you can be a part of that class. The most exciting update I think we're going to have here is the school of ministry. When I say the school of ministry, again, what I'm describing is this thing that we started at Parkway to help disciple and train the church. We're doing this in partnership with Kentucky Mountain Bible College, and Mrs. Lisa Kenner Connect is uh, leading this, is what I'm telling it. We, we like to think we're partnering with Lisa, but she is leading it. Um, she's doing a fantastic job, and what we're going to do is start this class. It'll start January 18th. Is that correct? So please, please come let us know. If you are interested in studying some uh, foundations of faith, I, I should have brought my notebook up with you. It's a college class I took. It was absolutely amazing. And so what we're going to do is offer that here at church. Incredible, incredible opportunity. And we're calling it the School of Ministry. So please come and see us for information on that. I want to again, thank you guys so much for your giving. You guys have been so great on how you've been giving. We've taken away offering plates. We put them in the back. We put it online. We do text messages. We do everything, and you guys have done great with that. But I just want to remind you, there's several different ways to give. We're not going to do in the middle of service like we normally do. It will be in the back as you leave. You can text. You can go to our website. Uh, you can mail it. Uh, please don't give me money. That's how pastors get fired, so give it to somebody else. Uh, put an offering plate, do something like that. But thank you so much for giving. I also want to give you guys an update on our Christmas offering. You all got a, a letter out saying that we wanted to steward what God has already given us. Uh, I want to give you an update on that. We didn't quite reach our giving goal, and I was a little discouraged by that, but I was really affirmed that in some of my prayer time that God gives exactly what we need. Do you believe that? And so we're going to steward what we have been given very appropriately. And I do believe we'll be able to give the staff a, a staff retreat, send them away, let them recharge. We've already been able to provide life insurance for the staff. Uh, Jacob and, and uh, our brother Darren are going to be able to get some new stuff for live stream. So God has already provided through you guys for that. So I'm so thankful for that. Give you guys a, a round of applause. If you're new to Parkway this Sunday, what I want to say is welcome to the family. We're crazy as everything, but I promise you we'll love you. Uh, if there's a connection card in the back of your seat, we would love to just connect with you. I'd love to hear your story. That's one of my favorite things about a pastor is when being a pastor is when a new person comes to church. I'd just love to hear your story, and I'd like to walk along with you. So if you'll fill that out and just put it at the... Um, and the offering plate at the very end of service. But what I want to do right now is just pray for us. We've already prayed for you as a staff, but what I want to do is pray that, number one, that God would eliminate all the distractions in your mind. I don't know about you, but 2020 has been a fun year full of distractions, right? And it can get us going left and right. But let's start 2021 on a new foundation. Let's make sure that we are not distracted, and we start this Sunday by intentionally worshiping God. And let's just pray that His presence would come and that we would respond to that. Will you join me in prayer for that? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this time that we get to come into your house, Father. Thank you for everything that's going on at Parkway House of Prayer. So thankful for your presence here today. We're thankful for the offering. We're thankful for the worship with the scriptures we're going to study today. We just ask that you'd be with us, God. Help us to eliminate all of our distractions. Help me in my heart, my mind, eliminate all the distractions so that I can truly worship you. So thankful for your presence here today. Thankful for what you've done in the past at Parkway. Thankful for what you're doing here right now, as well as what you're going to do in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please stand up and we'll continue worship. God is worthy to be praised. He is so worthy of it. He is the great I am. Let's sing this this morning. Let's sing. I want to be. 
be close to his side this morning. I want to be close, and close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one. Holy, holy God Almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside Thee, God Almighty, great I am. I want to be near. I want to be near to your heart loving the world and hating the dark I want to see dry bones living again singing as one hallelujah holy holy God almighty he's a great I am worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, great I am, great I am, let's sing, the mountains shake before you, the mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee, at the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power in the presence of the great I am, great I am, great I am, the great Great I 
who am I that the highest you would welcome me? I was lost. I was lost, but he brought me into oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, you believe it. Yes, he died for me. The sun set free. Oh, it's free indeed. And I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. technology right <laughs> but you know it's so cool that even though things don't work out sometimes God can still be praised and he's still worthy of it amen absolutely let's sing this chorus together know how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus so how I love Jesus because he first loved me there is a name I love to hear I love to sing its word it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth and oh how I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because He first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below? And oh, how I love Jesus! And oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! 
because he first loved me. Sing it again, just your voice. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning just uh, reflecting on the words of that song. How much you love us is just outside of anything that we can fathom, Lord. And that, God, you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us on a cross so that we could be reconciled back to you. And no thing that we can ever give you can ever match that gift, Lord. But this morning, we just ask you to bless the tithes and offerings that we bring to you. We ask you, Lord, to use them for your kingdom so that we can be a good steward of the things that you've given us. But Lord, also that we can be generous to those around us, uh, especially during these crazy times that was 2020, as we move into 2021, Lord. We know that uh, although 2020 was crazy, that you use all things for your good, Lord. So we just ask you to bless our tithes and offerings this morning so that we can ensure that every man, woman, and child has repeated opportunities to both see and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray for our pastor this morning. We pray for his heart to want to teach us. We ask that uh, you just open our hearts to hear the message that he has to bring us. And we pray all this in your heavenly name. Amen. You guys may take a seat this morning. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us stumble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols and give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another and give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. Oh God of Jacob, and oh, let us be a generation that seeks. Your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh, we seek your face this morning, God. We bow our hearts. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes. We turn our eyes. Yes, we do. From evil things, oh Lord, we cast down our idols. Oh, give us clean hands, and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And give us clean hands, oh God, and give us pure hearts. Let us not. Lift our souls to another, and God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob, and God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your clean hands and give us pure hearts 
Let us not lift our souls to another And give us clean hands, oh God Give us pure hearts Let us not lift our souls to another Amen That's our hearts cry this morning Give us clean hands, oh God Amen encourage you guys as we are worshiping to take those worship songs and to turn them into prayers. So imagine if you took that song, Give Us Clean Hands, and prayed it. You know what you would be praying? You'd be praying scripture out of Isaiah. And what if we would be a generation that seeks? Wouldn't that be awesome? A whole generation. Praise God. Thank you, Jacob, for picking that song. I know you pray through your scripture. I think we're going to have to pray a little harder about these distracting things called sound systems. So, Sweet mercy. If you have PTSD this morning, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is not the Sunday for you. But uh, no, I'm so thankful that you guys are here. I'm thankful that we can worship, as Jacob said, even with distractions. And uh, I want to tell you this this morning. I was thinking about this and praying through this all week. If you're here online or if you're here in person, that means that you have survived 2020. Say so praise God for that. I was thinking about that because I saw a post from somebody the other day who had been through a lot in 2020. And I looked through and they had lost family members. They had just been through the ringer. And if I read it to you today, you'd cry with me. I mean, it was just a bad year for them. But what they put at the bottom of that is, but yet I survived 2020 and I am still here and I won't let 2020 rob me of the good things that happened. And so what I've heard through this whole experience through as we kind of put the bow on a 2020 and say, you can kick rocks, I'm tired of you, go somewhere else. As if people say, you know what, I'm so thankful I survived 2020, and I'm thankful that we did too. But I'm looking at 2021, and my heart's cry is I'm so sick and tired of just surviving. I don't know about you. I'm sick and tired of just the mundane, of just getting by, and I want to thrive in 2021. I don't know about you. That sounds like a good name for a youth group. Maybe we should talk to Pastor Bubba or something about that. But I think we should thrive in 2021, not just slide by by the skin of our teeth, not just be able to weather the storm, but absolutely thrive in the pressure, be able to stand up under whatever 2021 brings us, to be able to praise God in the midst of the storm, to be able to walk through the fire and not be burned, to be able to say, I knew that I experienced God's presence in 2021. I want that so badly for me, for my family, and for the church family. I'm so thankful each and every year that we decide, a couple years ago we decided to start the year with prayer and fasting. And I love doing that together as a church. And this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. As you see that you guys probably got a book coming in. Uh, If you're online, you can stop by the office. Uh, Miss Lori will have a box of those in her office. You can pick those up. But you guys all received a book, so I want you guys to take that out. If you uh, came in late, uh, we probably didn't get one, I'm sorry, so if I had everybody hold their book up, you'd be left out, so I won't do that, okay? But uh, there'll be actually some books on the way out if you didn't grab one coming in. But I want you guys to take this out, and I want to show you something real quick. Uh, This is a devotional that we are all going to walk through as a church family, and I love it because if you've ever done family devotions, there's this sweet, intimate family time But now we get to do it times 200. Isn't that awesome? So if you think about it in the mornings or the evenings, whenever you're doing devotions, just think that your whole entire church family is in one accord doing the same thing with you. But the devotion, I want you guys to start today, if you'll open up to it. What it says is the very beginning is a foreword. You can read that. But then there's an introduction. I would encourage you guys tonight to read the introduction. And what that'll do is kind of prime you guys for tomorrow. Tomorrow is day one, okay? So day one, I want you guys to start. Again, morning, evening, whenever time. You guys, some people work nights, some people work not at all, some people work in the middle. So whenever time you do devotions, please do that. But uh, just know that we're going to be doing this together as a family. This is going to start again tomorrow, and it will end January 24th, which I believe, if I've done my math correctly, is a Sunday. And so we're going to celebrate 21 days of prayer and fasting together. What I want to also let you guys know is if you are tech savvy, uh, there is a, uh, a digital portion to this. Uh, if you're like my grandma and happens to be 86 or 87 and is more smart with technology than me, uh, then you may love it. Uh, I don't participate in the technology side of it that frequently, 
But there is uh, daily prayers. You can log on and they pray with you together through that. So just know that's not required. It doesn't take anything away from that. But that is something you can do. And it's, sometimes it is a little finicky, as you found out Sunday. Uh, this Sunday, that technology is not always 100%. But that's an option for you guys. This morning, again, as we start this, uh, I want to just kind of lay a foundation with you. And I've been really, as I've been telling you guys, really interested and kind of dumbfounded, if you will, on this thing called foundations. And I've been looking at people's life and realizing how important our foundations are. I've been looking at the craziness in our world and thinking, man, the foundations are so, so important. So as we begin 2020, and our hearts cry is, I don't just want to survive, I want to thrive. And as we choose to start this together with prayer and fasting, what I want to do is just describe at a foundational level what prayer and fasting truly is. So if you'll turn with me in your Bibles here to Matthew chapter 6, and we believe it's actually Matthew chapter 6, Daryl called me the other day and said, uh, what, what Bible are you preaching out of, son? I said, what in the world do you mean? He said, you keep putting up scriptures that are in the wrong passage. I said, well, I apologize for that, but I, it would look good in my Bible. But Matthew chapter 6, I think it's the correct one here. And again, I want to just teach you. It's going to be a little more teaching today. And that I'm hopefully going to teach you guys with foundational beliefs about prayer and about fasting. The reason I tell you that is because if I don't get it done, at least you know what my aim was in the whole sermon. But Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read verses 5 through 15 here. And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 6, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, Pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you need before you even ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. If you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The title of this uh, section here is Prayer, a Ministry that We Are All Called to. Prayer, a ministry that we were all called to. I don't know if you guys have this misconception in your mind that only seasoned Christians, only those with gray hair spiritually that have been through the war, those are the only ones that are supposed to pray. Or just the pastors, just the people on staff at a church, those are the prayer warriors. Or maybe the Sunday school teachers, they do such a fantastic job. Those are the prayer warriors. Well, I want to say very, very clearly, Jesus is talking to a bunch of knuckle-headed fishermen who are sitting in front of about several thousand people. And what he's saying is all of us are called to this thing called prayer. And if we're going to go through 2021 and we're going to thrive, we're going to have to really understand that we are each called to a powerful, deep, intimate, and real prayer life every single day. It's something we are all called to. But as we walk into this, we see through verses 1 through 6, very clearly this is supposed to be done with an attitude of what? Humility. You guys can read apparently. An attitude of humility. And the reason we put this and the reason God very clearly explains this in this passage is that back then, I think we'll see that back then equals what's happening now. But back then, the Pharisees, what they would do is they would pray very loudly. They would pray out in the synagogues. They prayed four hours a day. I don't know about you, but every time I study that, it impresses me and it convicts me. They prayed and fasted four hours a day. They did that so the whole community would know. So much so that actually the community knew what days of a week that they fasted. They had a regiment. We're just going to say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as an example. And the whole community knew that. But if you look at the results of that prayer and fasting, how deep were they? They spent a lot of time doing it and a lot of time showing people what they were doing, 
But those are the same very people that turned on Jesus. Maybe you think they had their priorities mixed up a little bit, and they didn't go into it humbly. They had their own mindset, their own opinion with it. They prayed aloud, and they didn't go to the Lord humbly and submit to whatever He wanted. If they would have done that, through that prayer and fasting four hours a day, they would have heard, your Savior has arrived. Worship Him. But they didn't. So for us, when we pray, it's something we need to make sure that we are praying humbly. Lowering yourself down. If you look throughout the Old Testament and even a lot of the New, when people realized that it was Jesus standing in front of them, the Savior of the world, not a good teacher, not an awesome guy, they realized this is Jesus Christ. You know what they did? They bowed down, they humbled themselves. And that's the first thing, if we're going to understand the foundation of prayer, is we have to approach this humbly. If you look through all of Scripture, all of the seasoned saints, all these people that we look up, look, <clears throat> excuse me, look up to, they approach Jesus humbly. That's something we really, really need to understand. The next is in prayer, if we're laying this foundational block, we need to make sure it's correct. Prayer, according to this passage, needs to be done with order. With done with order. And this is verse 7 through 15 as we find this. Preached a message a couple months ago, I think, on this about the order of prayer. And if you'll show the next slide for me, this is a pattern of prayer. It's called a, the 4 4 pattern. I preached this and I'm not sure that I communicated it right. I think uh, my grandma and Brandon Feldman appreciated that sermon. So we may uh, try to reiterate that just a little bit. Uh, but what this very simply says is that God wants us to approach prayer with order. And my, the reason why is if you look throughout all creation, is creation orderly? So what should that tell us about our Savior? He is a God of what? Order. So if He wants us to approach Him, you think there should be an order to that? And His disciples even ask Him this. And His response is this pattern of prayer. And the first thing, the upward here, this reverence, it goes right along with what we talked about prior. It's that humility. So when we approach God in prayer, our, our longing of our heart should be, Lord, You are so great. You are so good in reverence to who He is. And out of that, we naturally should be humble. If you realize, man, God created the whole world in six literal days. I'm thinking He probably can take care of my ingrown toenail pain. I'm thinking He probably can do that. I'm thinking He probably can provide for me. And I look in Scripture and say that, God, you said that you could provide for the sparrows. You could provide for all of the fish. You could provide for all of the, the, the plants in the field. I think that you can probably provide for me as a child of yours. And what you do is you elevate God to his rightful place. And your response to that should always be humility. Put God where he truly is. And the second thing is you respond to that and say, Lord, I'm so thankful that you're that way. The next, and this is the third thing, number one, two, and then three, is where we find our requests. When I preached that sermon, I told you that this convicted me because oftentimes I go to the Lord, number one, and say, Lord, I need help in this area. And I would articulate those are very good things. I didn't pray for brand new trucks or to be six foot four. Actually, yes, I did do that. He didn't answer that. but I didn't go to the Lord praying for selfish things. I prayed for good things, but I didn't do it in an appropriate order. I didn't respond to Him in His goodness. I didn't respond in humility prior to, to my request. And what that does is it tempers my whole prayer life. So number three should be our request. And then out of that should be our readiness. That should be saying, Lord, because you are good, because you are great, because you have created the whole world, because you are omnipotent, you're omnipresent, you are there, because you gave us scripture, God, I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful that you're with me through all of my trials. Lord, would you help me to realize that in the middle of my trial? Then that readiness is, Lord, I'm ready for whatever you may bring across my way. Because of who you are, because of what you've promised in your scripture, because of my answers to prayers previously, I am ready for whatever you bring me. And I'm open to that. That's the 4 4 pattern of prayer. And I hope you'll begin to pray according to that. But again, prayer, this ministry that we are all called to, number one, we have to do it with humility. Walk into prayer humbly, 
and begin to praise God. Next is we have to, again, do this 4-4 pattern of prayer. Next, I want to get into this idea of fasting. Everybody is so encouraged about this, right? Thank you, Miss Jane. I appreciate that you're here. Matthew chapter 6. I want to walk into this. Matthew chapter 6, and this is verse 16 through 18. What we often do is talk about the Lord's Prayer. And we memorize it as kids. We memorize it in Sunday school, and I'm very thankful for that. But there's a piece right after this prayer passage. Again, context, context, context. Right after the Lord teaches His disciples, His warriors, who are sitting in front of a multitude of people, the very next thing He teaches them is about what? Fasting. So my question to you is, something, is fasting something that we should walk into as a modern day church in the New Testament? I've been accused and people have told me and they weren't being mean about it, but they said, isn't fasting kind of old-fashioned? Isn't fasting kind of outdated? I think partly they were being snarky. I think partly they were just confused and a lot of it they just didn't understand. But Jesus clearly tells us to participate in prayer. But with His next breath, He teaches us how to do this thing called fasting. And for the next 21 days, this is going to lay a foundation for us to walk into. When I say fasting, I just want to clear up, clear up that word. You guys don't know Greek, nor do you actually care, so I won't try to pronounce the Greek word. But that word fasting, what it typically means is those who abstain from food for a period of time. And when I say that, people kind of wig out on me and say, so for the next 21 days, are you telling me that I'm not supposed to eat? I'm not telling you that. How often the Lord tells you that, then I probably would obey it, okay? What I'm saying is abstain from something. Typically, food is what this word was linked to. A lot of people come to me and say, well, I have dietary needs. I, I can't quite do that. And uh, I want to get a little snarky and say, I, I see your dietary needs. It's not diabetes. It's that right there. But it's not appropriate for pastors to talk about that, so we can't go there. But seriously, people that have uh, any medical need, I don't encourage you to abstain from food for 21 days if you can't do that. Um, that is not appropriate. We don't want, want you to end up in the back of the ambulance with me. So think about that appropriately and ask the God to lead you in that. So some just words of advice. If you're fasting uh, and you can't fast from food, maybe it'd be appropriate for you to fast from something. Um, I've told you guys before that God has really put on my heart and mind. Actually, I deleted it off my, um, off my phones uh, about a month ago. And this morning, I deleted YouTube off my phone. But if you delete all of that stuff off your social media and just say, Lord, I'm fasting from that. I'm abstaining from those things. Those things are not inherently evil. Uh, contrary to popular belief, YouTube and Facebook is not inherently evil. But for 21 days, Lord, I'm abstaining from that. And I want to be hungry for you. That time that I, I want to get on that, that time I want to look at this, the time I want to do, go here and see what this person is doing, I'm going to replace that by seeking you because I'm hungry for you in 2021. So let's just reiterate that in terms of fasting. And another example or another point just to ponder, is if you are going to fast from food for the next 21 days, fast from something, just out of a plea from my heart, please don't be grumpy. Can we do that? Please. I, I'm not trying to necessarily make fun of this, but there's a, a gentleman that I know that every time he fasted, we would ask him, be like, are you fasting? How did you know? I'm like, <laughs> that right there. You need a Snickers, buddy. You're grumpy as everything. I know you're fasting. So just watch yourself. I, I'm joking about it, but I'm also being serious. If you're abstaining from food and you're grumpy as everything, that may actually defeat the whole purpose of what's going on in your life. So just check yourself there. In terms of praying and fasting here, Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read verses 16 through 18. And we'll look at some of the foundations here. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. Uh, I wish that said grumpy countenance, but it says sad. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to, to men to be fasting, but your Father who is in a secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So again, what is this saying? Number one, to go about this humbly. 
the hypocrites and the Pharisees, what they would do is they would fast and they would look all downtrodden. and they would wear sackcloth. They wouldn't wash their face. They would just look like they were mourning and, and being spiritually uh, almost <laughs> grumpy, if you will. And so that was so that people could see their outward appearance and see that, oh, wow, look at them. They're fasting. Oh, wow, look at them. They're really devout. When someone tells you that they're fasting or that they're praying or how much their devotional time is, I always go, uh, why do you got to tell me that? That was supposed to be a secret thing between you and God. If you want to teach me something out of it, please, by all means, but just to flaunt that in front of somebody is what they were doing then. And we should learn from it now that we got to approach that humbly. The next is this thing called prayer and fasting. Fasting always in Scripture accompanies prayer. The only best way I could describe it today, and again, I'm not trying to be blasphemous. I'm just, I guess, a foodie. It's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And if you don't like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I guess that's your fault for not liking greatness. The fact that somebody took peanuts and jelly and put them together is just incredible. But it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Prayer is when you say, Lord, I I really want to hear from you. I respond to you in that. We talked about that 4-4 pattern of prayer. Praying that way, listening to Him, responding to who He is. And fasting is saying, Lord, I am serious about this. And you put both of that together, and that is such a powerful spiritual discipline that makes us make sure that in 2021 that we are establishing our lives, our family, our church on the bedrock of what God wants us to. Again, something needs to be done humbly. We shouldn't put all over Facebook, join me, I'm praying and fasting. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) But how about you just do that humbly and invite others along with you? Next is it always accompanies prayer. The next is it's extremely biblical. If you're sitting there trying to just jog through your brain a reason why for the next 21 days that you shouldn't fast, uh, this is not going to help that out, just to be honest. Praying and fasting is extremely biblical. And I had such a fun time, and if you're interested in it, I'll give you the study. But I looked up all of the Old Testament references for fasting. And yes, fasting was present in the Old Testament. And I looked up all the New Testament examples of fasting. And it's extremely biblical for us to do this thing called prayer and fasting. There's something wildly different, however, about the Old Testament fasting that I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about this morning. The Old Testament fast, what what were they doing throughout the whole Old Testament? They were anticipating who? Jesus Christ. So their prayer and fasting was anticipating that Savior. Oftentimes, it would be associated with repentance as well, but they were anticipating that Savior. In the New Testament, the Savior has come. And what does the Savior teach us to do and teach His apostles to do? To pray and fast. So this whole thing called praying and fasting is extremely biblical. It's not something that man created. It's not some pastor who initiated this. It's extremely biblical that we do this. You need to do it with humility to accompany with accompanies with prayer, and it's extremely biblical. The fourth thing is it's foundational. It's absolutely foundational. Again, this is something that I've been just really, really thinking about. But if you look throughout, the, again, the Old Testament and the New Testament, what we'll find is that there is these huge moments in people's lives. And it, what preceded, as we'll talk about in a minute, was prayer and fasting. If you look at the life of Moses, what do you see there? You see a lot of praying, a lot of fasting, a lot of time in the presence of God. You think that was foundational for him for, as a leader of that crazy group of people? You think being a pastor is hard in 2020? Imagine being Moses. Those guys are crazy, right? <laughs> he spent a lot of time praying and fasting. Why? Because it was foundational to him. He knew that when the trials come, he knew when the enemy came to attack, when the people would turn and they needed repentance, he needed to bounce off a bedrock of praying and fasting. If you realize when he was up on Mount Sinai or Sinai, Sinai, however you pronounce it, uh, when he was getting the Ten Commandments, you know what he was doing that whole entire time for 40 days? Praying and fasting, talking with God and abstaining so that he could make sure that he heard every single thing that God had for him. It's foundational. So that's on the Old Testament. In the New Testament, 
You know what Jesus Christ did in Matthew chapter 4 before He began His earthly ministry? He fasted. He built His entire ministry on this bedrock before He started anything. He prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Again, we're only doing 21. Maybe next year we'll go to the 40. But you see, you see these foundational places, this guy like Moses who wanted to get so close to God, and Jesus Christ who was supposed to lead us right into this thing called the cross that gave us the repentance for our sins, that provided us a relationship for him. The earthly ministry that he started was built on this foundation of prayer and fasting. It's extremely biblical. It's foundational. And as we talked about just a moment ago, it preceded very large events. And Acts, again, Acts is one of my favorite books. Acts 13 and 14, it talks about how the early church was, be- was beginning. You know what they did before a church was founded? When a church was founded and they started to elect elders for that church, you know what they did to elect those elders? They prayed and fasted. Good guess. <laughs> they prayed and fasted to make sure that they got that right elder. When the Holy Spirit came, you know what they were doing in the upper room? Praying in one accord. Do you see this? It preceded these huge events. I was talking to a pastor recently. Actually, I was at a a conference several years ago, to be honest. And the speaker asked this pastor to tell the story of their church. And I thought, I just got so grumpy. I wasn't fasting. I was just in a bad mood, apparently. But I thought, I've heard that story 30 times. I drove all the way here. I paid this money. Here I am trying to figure out what to do for our church and praying about that. And i got to hear this blooming story over again. Watch out when you do that, because that's when the Lord convicts you and just thumps you right in the nose. And he told that story again, and what he said is something that I hadn't heard before, I hadn't seen, and what he said was, and he drew it out, and he said, anything big that has ever happened in our church ministry, and God had done some huge things in that church ministry, he said, it started back to when we prayed and fasted in January, and you could draw a line right back to that foundation. It preceded those big, big events. And I thought, Lord, I am so, so sorry for being grumpy. I'm thankful that you had him tell that story again. Because I look at these blessings and I realize I never drew a correlation between it was because they prayed and fasted and God birthed something in that moment. When it came to fruition, it was a very fruitful ministry. It preceded those huge, huge events. I want to give you, as we kind of conclude this study of prayer and fasting, I want to give you just a couple guidelines for praying and fasting. Again, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18, it talks about how we should do this humbly. We shouldn't be proud that we're going to go into this. We should be resp- responding to Him humbly in that. But what this tells me is, number one, there needs to be a posture that each one of us need to be in as we walk into this next 21 days. A posture, not physically necessarily, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. That posture would look like somebody on their knees, just with their hands out saying, God, I want more of you. Next, out of that posture, we should understand the purpose of our prayer and fasting. The purpose of this prayer and fasting is, number one, to seek God's direction. I don't know about you, but I don't want to make up my own direction. If He again created the whole world, He gave us all of Scripture to study, if He gave us the Holy Spirit, if He can guide and direct us through things, I want to know His direction for my family, for myself, and for this church. Amen? And I want you guys to make sure that as we walk into this next 21 days, that we understand the purpose of that is to seek God's direction. One example that we look in Scripture of praying and fasting is in Acts chapter 10 of Cornelius. And what it tells us, it's a whole fun story that may be a sermon here on later, but in Acts chapter 10, he, he, he's, he's at 3 o'clock during the day. If you do all the calculations and figure out what was going on culturally, at 3 p.m. during the day, it says that he is in his home praying and fasting. And what a lot of the commentators say was, just like today, it's not normal for him to be in, at home at 3 o'clock. But something was going on where he stopped everything and put himself in a posture of prayer in his home. And what he was doing is he was seeking direction from God. What was happening during that time was the Jews and the Gentiles, remember how they didn't get along? And so the Jews realized that, wow, the Gentiles, that God even died for them. And so Cornelius was wanting this direction from God. He was wanting to know what God had for him and his family in terms of his ministry. So he stayed home and he prayed and fasted. 
Our posture is extremely important. We have to understand that this is to seek God's direction. Not to change God and say, hey, God, can we go here in 2021? Hey, we think this is a great idea to say, no, Lord, what is your direction? I feel you moving, but I want to know exactly what you have going on. Next is that this purpose of praying and fasting is to realize that this is a source of strength for us. We're running a lot of time, so I won't read you this whole passage, but it's in Ezra chapter 8 if you want to read through it. Ezra chapter 8, verse 21 through 23. And it talks about this, how that they were walking along and they realized there was a need that came, that came up, that there was a problem that arose. And what they realized they needed to do is they didn't call for reinforcements. They didn't put a tweet, a tweet out. They didn't Facebook. They didn't do anything like that. What they did was they prayed and fasted. And the coolest thing in verse 23, it says, and God answered our prayers. And they realized that this praying and fasting was actually a source of their power. That when we talk to God who created the entire world, that he will plug into our situation and provide us. He is the source for all of that. And in 2021, we really need to realize that that is the source of all of our power. All of our energy, all of our motives, all of everything we need, it starts in prayer and in fasting. The next is the purpose for praying and fasting is, number one, it quiets. Number two, it clarifies our spiritual longings. And this is just a personal testimony out of my heart. When I pray and fast, what it does to me is it eliminates all the craziness in my life. When I cut out Facebook or YouTube or abstain from certain food items, what it does, it just quiets my soul. And it's like a radio, and it tunes my soul right into what God wants for me. It quiets what I am, and it awakens this thing that I'm so longing for, and that is to hear God's direction. One of my favorite passages in Scripture is Moses and Exodus. After he deals with all the craziness, after he goes up and, and gets the, the Ten Commandments from God, after he sees and he comes down and all the people are, have made a, a golden calf, and they've just turned in those 40 days against him and just, oh, just balled up. The next passage you'll find what he is doing is he took his tent, and I always, I always think this is such a grumpy dad movie. He took his tent out of that craziness and just took it outside and set it away from them. He said, I just need a moment. What he did was he took his tent out of the normal everyday meeting place, and he did something just outside of normal. And what it did was it moved him physically so that he could respond spiritually. And that's why I love revival. That's why I love prayer meeting. That's why I love camp meeting. That's why I love praying and fasting. There's nothing magical about that place he put his tent. But he intentionally moved and did something to show his physical body, his mental body, and his spiritual side saying, I really want to hear from God. In 2020, I want to begin this year by really quieting and moving myself away from things and saying, I just want to hear from you. I want to know your purpose. I want to know your power. I want to make sure that I'm rooted and grounded in your word. And I'm going to step away from that normal thing that you've called me to just to seek you for this time, Lord. And when I go back and it's, you see what happened to Moses, and this is the whole theme of this praying and fasting, is that God will fill you and send you back into normal. If you realize what happened to Moses, when he would go out, what did it say? His face shone with the glory of of God and people knew and worshiped and glorified God. What it says is that they didn't look at Moses and say, wow, what a great leader. They looked at him and said, that guy has met with the Lord and they worshiped our heavenly father. Out of prayer and fasting, I want us to hear from God. I want us to, to, to quieten our souls, to us to be rooted and grounded in that foundation. But I, what, I, what I really want it to do is to light us on fire to really get us shining, to be a light in a dark world, so that when we go back, all of the normal people that we're around say, man, something has happened during that 21 days in that church. And it's not because they're a bunch of awesome people, it's because they have met with somebody that I need to meet with, and it's going to make them hungry. Church, will you join me in this 21 days prayer and fasting? I don't know what it'll look like for you, I don't know what you may abstain from, I don't know what pattern you may pray, pray in, but I'm asking and I'm pleading, would you please Join us in this 21 days of praying and fasting. I want to pray for you as you respond to that. I can't make you. I can manipulate you maybe two days to do this, and that's about it. <laughs> but I would love for you guys to join us in that, to pray and fast, and to establish our year, our family, our church on bedrock. And so no matter what the storms may bring, 
we're praying and fasting so we can hear God at the very beginning of this year. Can I pray for you, church, as we close? And actually, I'm going to have Jacob come, and we're going to sing that song, Give Us Clean Hands Again. Dear Heavenly Father, as we've studied your word, as we've seen how this is extremely biblical, how you have established this in the Old Testament and the New Testament, how this praying and fasting is sandwiched together. You want us to do both of them. Father, I pray that you help us as we walk into it. Help us, Lord, to hear you, to quiet our souls. Help us to make sure that we're doing it according to your purpose and your will. That we're walking into it humbly, God. We're responding. That's that 4-4 pattern of prayer that we've been studying. We respond humbly to you. We bring our request at the very tail end of that, God. And as you fill us, as you meet with us in these 21 days, that just like Moses, we establish and we pull ourselves away, that God, that you would fill us, that you would make our face shine with your glory, not so that people see us. They don't need us. The world doesn't need Gareth. It doesn't need Parkway House of Prayer. The world needs you. And I pray that you fill us in this 21 days so that we can go out into a lost and dying world and we don't bankrupt them of the very thing they need, which is your presence. But God, we are so full of it that they are hungry just like the children of Israel, that they repent of their sins, that they fall on their face and say, Lord, you are the one we need to worship. God, guide and direct us to this 21 days. Help us to seek you with our whole heart. Give us clean hands, God. Give us a pure heart. Let us be a generation that truly seeks you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me and sing this song? I challenge you to turn this into a prayer. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Seeks your face, oh God of Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh, oh Jacob. We bow, we bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh carry it, come make us. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Oh, give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, oh God. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. Oh God of oh Jacob, oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face. Oh God of oh Jacob. Let's send this, 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 give us clean hands. And give us clean hands. And give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And give us clean hands. And give us pure heart. Let us not lift our souls to another. carry that as we go out this today. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. You're dismissed.